YouTube. What's going on guys? My name is Mike and I'm back with another video. So today we have a little bit of a problem going on. Um, as you can see, I'm holding one of my chickens here. She's a very nice lady, um, but she's not feeling very well. She's feeling yucky. What the issue that she has is I recently found out she has worms, round worms to be specific. Um, but there's a little bit of a story behind how I found that. So let me go through that. I noticed uh, about two, three days ago that she, the other chickens were picking on her and they pecked her little wing open and she was bleeding. Um, so like all chickens, they can be cannibalistic when um, they see blood. So when they see blood, they'll peck it and peck it and they'll make it a lot worse. So what I did was I decided to isolate her, take her out of the coop, put her in a little so a secondary cage that I have for these types of occasions. Um, so, and then I went ahead and I ordered this product, which is called Pick No More. Um, this is a, it's, it's a little like lotion that you can rub on the wound once it's scabbed over and healed up a little bit. You don't want to put it on like an open wound, but um, you know, by the time this came in, this would have already been scabbed like it is now. And lo and behold, when I came in to, to check on her, give her water and actually apply this lotion to her to put her back into the coop with the rest of her friends, um, I noticed that there were worms in her poop. Um, there was one occasion, one poop, where there was a ton of worms. And I'll put a photo of that, uh, right in, insert it right now, so you can look. And as you can see, um, it's a wet poop and there's a lot of, lot of, looks like spaghetti. Uh, the worms are spaghetti looking and those are called roundworms. So like all birds, all outside animals, they are susceptible to worm, uh, worm getting worms and parasitic creatures into their uh, gastrointestinal system. And um, my birds are uh, no, you know, no difference from that. So they did get worms. Um, now what you have to assume is that if one bird has worms, they all have worms. Uh, they, especially in, in a flock where they poop and the worms are moving, um, another chicken will come and just gobble them right up. So that's just their nature, that's what they do. Uh, you can't fault them for that, but it's our responsibility as um, chicken keepers and, and um, you know, just any kind of live, livestock keepers to take care of that as soon as you notice it. So um, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to treat her with this lotion, get her back with her friends, and then I'm going to treat all of the, the chickens with a um, antibiotic. So there are natural ways to treat worms or prevent worms, but once you have the worms and you've identified that your chickens have worms, you're going to want to give them an antibiotic. Now, some antibiotics are uh, more uh, aggressive than others. Um, all of them seem to have a withdrawal period, which means that you cannot eat the meat of the bird if you're harvesting for meat or their eggs um, for a certain period of time. The product that I picked up seems to be the best, uh, the best option um, for when they already have worms. And you, you can do this on like a quarterly basis for preventative at a lesser dose. But um, this is actually called fenbendazole, fenbendazole. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, it's from Safeguard and it's actually dewormer for goats. Um, I did my research, my due diligence. I checked a ton of forms on dosage and if this is okay for birds. This seems to be the one that most chicken keepers um, like to treat their, their birds when they already have worms. So um, I did some research and I found that you want to do about 20 milliliters, 15 to 20 milliliters per five gallons for a three to five day period. And that's what I'm going to do here because I have to assume that all of my birds have worms. Um, so, and, and the worms, that, as you saw in the picture, it's a pretty aggressive case. This wasn't just one or two worms. This was quite a bit. Um, so we're going to get you all fixed up, lady bird. Don't worry about this. So let's go ahead and uh, first apply the lotion to her, get her back with her friends so she's happy. And, um, and then we'll go ahead and we'll mix. I've already pre pre-prepared their water. I'm going to do five gallons of water here and I'm going to put it into their watering system, a uh, little watering container. So everything's cleaned up, ready to go. Um, but let's just do one thing at a time and let's get her treated. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to come down on the ground here just for easy, ease of use. Lulu is a, is a friend of the birds. Friends, not food, right, Lulu? Friends, not food. You can uh, show Lulu. Let's see what, right, Lulu? Friends, not food. Yes, good girl, okay. 
She's licking her lips. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, oh. let's go ahead and go for this. So there's the wound. If you can zoom in on the wound a little bit, you can see it's nothing crazy. It's healed up a little bit, but they pecked the feather away. And, um, and yeah, so we just want to, we want to just want to cover this up a little bit with this lotion. It's just like a goop, kind of like a, a goopy purplish. She's not happy, especially with Lulu coming in. Oh, okay. There we go. That's fine. I'll stand up again. Um, okay. So as you can see, I just kind of covered the wound up. I'm just kind of making sure it gets all over where there would have been a scab or blood this way. And this stuff, apparently, it's called Pick No More. They don't like the smell of it, and I don't think they like the color of it either. It doesn't attract them. Um, so they, the other chickens won't keep picking this open, and it can kind of heal underneath this, this little wound here. Um, like I said, you do want to make sure it's not an open wound. I don't think you want to be putting anything on an open wound unless it's some kind of antibacterial. But, okay, so that's it. We kind of just coated her little wing. Let's go and put her back in the in the coop with the rest of the chickens. Oh, let me just get that, there we go. Come on, let's go look. Okay, be free. And there she goes, she's right back in. The rest of the birds, good as new. And we'll observe her just a little bit. Um, you know, just to make sure that the other ones that see that one kind of pecked at it, she got a taste. And she doesn't really like it too much. She's shaking her head. Uh, and I think the rest of them will kind of do that as well, where they'll just, um, uh, a, we're having a, a chicken run. Here, let me put them, knock them all back in. We'll close this gate, this little door here, so nobody breaks free. And yeah, I'll, I'll observe her, I'll watch her, I'll make sure that they, they kind of take to that little purple wound. It looks like they're not. Oh. Yeah, they don't like it. You see that? This is a good. This is a great example. They're gonna peck it a little bit. Oh yeah, and they don't. Like and they it. don't like the taste of it, the smell of it. It, it must stick to their beak. And um, and sh I'm sure each one of them will get their own little pick at the the wound, and then they'll leave it alone because they really don't like the the look of it and the taste of it. So, pretty cool. Okay. Door. It's very windy here in New Jersey today. It's about 31 degrees, 32 degrees. So it's definitely chilly and very windy. So it's just beautiful New Jersey weather. Okay guys, so um, like I mentioned before, this is the safeguard. I just went and I grabbed a, um, a little uh, a little dropper, whoops, dropped the thing. A little dropper here. And this dropper, uh, it, it just indicates an in milliliter. 5, 10, 15, 20, so um, to treat five gallons of water, I'm gonna treat 20 milliliters of this stuff, um, and I'm gonna allow them to be exposed to this for three to five days. I'm thinking five days because um, they, they, I did see the worms. I wanna shake this up really good, they've mentioned. They also say uh, on the forms that I read and the, the information that I gathered that you're gonna wanna mix the water periodically because this, this um, antibiotic, this medicine, it will sink to the bottom of the, uh, the water and it, you want it to be evenly distributed. So what I'll do is we're gonna go ahead and just pull out, I'm gonna do 20 milliliters of this stuff and that's what that looks like and this like I said I'm only doing this much because one I read that um, it is uh, a pretty mild solution it's pretty hard for them to um, kind of overdose and get really hurt by it and number two I did see a lot of worms in that one chicken and I have to assume that all of them have this that meant that amount of infection or worms in their bodies so I definitely want to kill off all these worms um, and really hit them. And then what I'll do as a preventative me measure is I'll give them some of the natural methods like diatomaceous earth. Um, and I read that um, a lot of garlic, if you, if you feed the chickens garlic, it can help prevent worms from ever establishing. Uh, apple cider vinegar, I also read, was a great preventative method that you can use just mixing in their water to keep the pH um, in an acidic point, so below seven. 
Uh, and that, that just really makes the gastrointestinal system inside of the chicken an undesirable place for worms to live. Uh, so if they ever do ex get exposed to eggs or um, the parasite itself, the parasite will likely either leave on its own or die inside of the chicken just because it's not a great place. So if you want to just zoom in on the bucket here, I'll show you what it looks like when it starts to get into water. So um, yeah, here we go. So this is um, me mixing it and as you can see, it is a heavier solution, so it sinks to the bottom. Uh, it doesn't want to mix very well, so you do want to come out. Uh, maybe if you can do this treatment on the weekend, like I'm doing it, this is a Saturday. So I'm going to make sure I come out every couple hours and really mix the water up for them. Um, so that they get, a, uh, they, they get an even distribution of the, the, the medication itself. Oh, and I also forgot to mention that you can find this, uh, you can find this particular, the Safeguard Dewormer, um, down in the description below. This will, uh, I'll have, you can get this from Amazon. I actually picked this particular one up. This is 120 milliliters, um, from a feed store. There's my local tractor supply, uh, for about 30, 35 bucks. I believe it was $35 after tax, 37 um, so I'll put a link to this down in the description below so that you guys can find it and order it, uh, you know, two days Amazon Prime shipping. So, um, you can find that down there. So let's go ahead and mix this stuff up. Okay. I've just found a, um, I just found a stick in the yard. I mean, you don't have to go crazy with what you're going to use, but you do want to definitely mix it. Like I said, so we're going to mix this stuff up really good. Get it evenly distributed in the water there. Right, that looks like it's gonna be pretty good. And I, like I said, I'll come out and I'll do this once in a while. Okay, let's get it into the, the chicken feeder now. And the reason why I mixed it in the bucket first and then I'm gonna transfer it into my chicken waterer is because I wanted to make sure I had five gallons exactly what I was mixing. I did, cause sometimes I miss and some water spills out. I didn't wanna put um, or overdose the feeder or the waterer with the amount of water, with the less amount of water in case some spilled out. Um, it's just for me to be a little more precise with my measurement. So this way, if any of the mixed solution spills out, that's, that's lost and, and, and it won't, I'm not gonna be overdosing my chickens. So if that makes any sense, um, let me know down in the comments below if you want me to further explain that. Uh, that that's the best I could do right now. So here we go. I do want to be very careful, and obviously a funnel would work better, but I think I have pretty good aim. I've been doing it for years. And also, this helps mix it too. I just kind of made a, a thought as I'm doing this, is this is also mixing the solution even further. Okay, there we go, five gallons. And another note is to make sure that the chickens all get a drink of this. I did, um, I removed the water from the coop for about three to four hours this morning. This kind of just sat out here. So I know that they're gonna be thirsty. And uh, when, I, when I put this in there, and I'll demonstrate that um, right now as I put this in. Drinking time. Excuse me, lady. Uh -oh. Okay, they are see, and like I mentioned, they are thirsty. gathering around.
yourself. Okay guys, so I think I might have mentioned, I don't know if I did or not, but I want to really drive home the point that you have to take care to not eat the eggs while they're on an antibiotic and for a period after the, the antibiotic, they're done with the antibiotic. So what they call this is the withdrawal period. Um, I'm standing right here where in their, their egg boxes, their, their breeder boxes where they lay, like to lay their eggs. Um, and I have about a dozen or so that I have to collect. Now I know that all of these eggs in here are clean. They're, this is pr prior to me giving them antibiotics. And another note that I read was that uh, roundworms really don't affect the eggs unless it's a severe, severe case where um, you know you actually start to see the worms inside of the eggs themselves, which is I haven't noticed anything like that up to you know into this point. So I know that all of these eggs that are in here I'm going to collect today are good for me to eat. I enjoy hard-boiled eggs. Um, and anything after today or after this point, after I collect any eggs there, I will discard. Um, I will not be eating them. I won't be giving them away. They, these eggs are, are essentially contaminated as far as I'm concerned. Um, so just wanted to drive home that point. Uh, and yeah, let's collect some eggs. One of my favorite parts about keep chicken keeping is the bounty. And these eggs are so good, guys. If you've ever had chickens or if you've never had chickens, or had farm fresh eggs, they are delicious. These ones are warm. These are super fresh. Maybe a couple minutes. A couple minutes. All right guys, well, that's the end of the video today. I just wanted to give you guys an update and show you how, um, you know, what you have to do when you do notice that your chickens have worms, in my case, round worms. So if you, th if you found any of this information helpful or um, entertaining and you like to follow along uh, my journey and on chicken keeping and just uh, backyard activities as a, um, as a small scale homesteader, uh, go ahead and like and this this video comment down below if you like it or if you have any questions for me And if you want to see more from me and, and my journey as I get better at making uh, YouTube production um, Go ahead and hit that bell notification up in the corner of the, the screen there that um, that really helps uh, spread my videos around and get my the information that I'm gonna share um, to other people like you and like me so um, I really appreciate you guys joining me along today on this uh, not so pleasant uh, um, experience of finding and having to treat my chickens for worms, but everything's learning, and uh, it's all it's all part of it's all part of just keeping chickens, uh, uh, backyard chickens. So, uh, with that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.